Okay, try number two. <laughs> okay, so um, covalent naming and formula writing. Now, if you're in honors, you don't know what a covalent bond is yet, but hopefully um, soon. But if you're on level, you will know what a covalent bond is by this point. A covalent bond is between a metal, I'm sorry, non-metal and a non-metal, whereas an ionic bond is between a non-metal, a metal and a non-metal. So again, this is between two non-metals, and so we have different naming rules for two non-metals together. Uh, covalent and formula, covalent formulas and naming formulas are really, really, really easy. But you just have to follow some rules. First off, make sure you have a periodic table. Know that if you see two non-metals together, that we have special names for them. Sometimes they actually have special, special names, such as NH3 is ammonia and H2O is water instead of dihydrogen and all that stuff. But we may put that on a test just to see if you understand. Um, here's the rules. Step one, have a periodic table. Know it's metal, a non-metal plus a non-metal. Name the first element, change the second element to IDE, and then add any prefixes that you might need to use. Always use prefixes on a second element and the first one only gets a script, sub, only if the subscript has a two or higher in the subscript. Um, and I'm gonna go over each one of these. The prefixes, you have uh, one is mono, two di, three tri, four is tetra, five is penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca. The ones I put stars by are the ones that get missed the most, like di and tetra and nona. So, Put a star bomb. You can add these to your brain dump on your periodic table. It won't hurt my feelings. Um, and then you have them at all times. All right. So we'll start with one that's fairly simple. And we'll do CO2. If I wanted to write the name for CO2, first they're both nonmetals. Carbon's a nonmetal, oxygen's a nonmetal. So I've looked at my periodic table. I find that carbon is the first name. Oxygen is the second element, but I'm going to change it to oxide because I'm gonna change the name when they're bonded. I'm gonna add any prefixes I need to. The first one has a subscript of one. Even though it's not written there, it's a subscript of one. So it is not a two or higher. So you leave that alone. This second subscript is a two. So I go over to my prefixes and I'm gonna use di. So my final answer is carbon dioxide. Pretty simple stuff, pretty simple stuff, okay? Not hard at all if you know your prefixes. Now, do not get this confused with ionic bonds because ionic bonds, you have charges because you have a, non -met a metal plus a non-metal, so you have cations plus anions. These have no charges, no charges, okay? No charges. So if I had, uh, let's say N, no, let's see, not N3P4, N3P4. I'm gonna take my first element, they're both non-metals, nitrogen. And then I have phosphorus. Well, I gotta change phosphorus to phosphide. I-D-E ending, because it's the second element. The, then I'm gonna add prefixes. Well, the first one does have a subscript that's not a one, so I have to add it. So I'm gonna add tri to it, tri-nitrogen. Tri-nitrogen, then this one has a four. So chi nitrogen, four is tetra, tetra phosphide. So my final product, or my final uh, name is tri nitrogen tetra phosphide. And it is all one, uh, or it's two words, phosphide. And uh, tri nitrogen tetra phosphide. But tri nitrogen is one word tetraphosphide is another word, okay? So, so far, hopefully you're going, hey man, that's pretty easy, especially after we got done with ionic naming, because name, that, that's when we had all of the polyatomic ions, we had the cations and the anions, and we had to swap charges, we had to balance the charges. Here, there are no charges to balance. All you do is take your subscript and make it a prefix. So now, how do we go from formula, names to formulas? So how do we take a name to a formula? So let's say I have, um, uh, let's see, let's go with tri, uh, tri, uh, sulfur, 
trisulfur, and I spelled sulfur wrong, you are, trisulfur hexafluoride. Trisulfur hexafluoride. Now I want to make a formula out of it. Well, I do the opposite of what I did here. I'm going to go sulfur, I'm going to put the symbol for sulfur, and I'm going to put the symbol for fluorine, and then I'm just going to add, where's my prefix? Tri is three, hexa is six. There's my formula. You take your prefixes, turn them into subscripts. Prefixes, turn them into subscripts. No crisscrossing, no drop, cross and drop, just bring straight down. This is going to cause a problem when you start to go back and forth between uh, ionic and covalent. So you definitely need to know what the difference between an ionic bond or ionic formula and a covalent formula is. Ionic formulas have cations and anions. Non-covalent uh, formulas and naming have non-metal and non-metal. Okay. Now, what if I get something like this? Let's see. Um, N2O5, N2O5. Well, it's nitrogen, and then it's oxide. So this is di, nitrogen, and then this is penta. Well, you don't, you're not gonna write penta, you're gonna put pent oxide. You're gonna drop the A and add uh, the oxide to it. So. Whenever it has in the, it's an A and then it has an O next to it, drop the A. So it's tetroxide and pentoxide, hexoxide, heptoxide, that kind of stuff. All right. So again, let's do one more just because I want to make sure. Let's do this one. Let's do. Um, no, let's do. PCL3, PCL3, okay? First thing you wanna do is write the form, the name. So this first one is phosphorus. And then chloride, I'm gonna stop some this time, because we're changing it to IDE. Then you look for prefixes. This one has no number to it, so we leave it alone. No prefixes. This one gets tri, trichloride, okay? So if you don't see a pre if you don't see a subscript, and these are called subscripts, if you don't see a subscript, then you don't put anything on the first one. Okay? But what if it was like this? What if I had something like this? Well then this one always gets a prefix. And it would be monochloride. So it'd be phosphorus monochloride. And that's pretty much it. Okay. The second one always gets a prefix. The first one only gets a prefix if it's two or higher. So hopefully you guys do well. Bring this stuff to class. Make sure you have a periodic table.